Hey everyone, good morning. And this is Srinivasan here. And let's wel welcome back you to my channel. This is uh, Selenium Automation and Java Learning with Srini. And in the next session, that is this particular session, we are going to look at this fourth interview question. That is, how do you implement OOPS concept as a part of your automation framework? So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing it. I would strongly recommend. And you can look at my existing videos in my channel. And if you want me to make any video on any particular topic, please feel free to write a comment and I'll be able to do the same. Okay. So let's get started with today's topic. So today's interview question topic is, how do you implement OOPS concepts as a part of your automation framework? This is a very, very important question, which is going to test the candidates success in the interview. Now, why I say success here is because this is the most important part which they want to see. Can the candidate confidently explain as well as, uh, you know, it should be sounding as if you are genuine. It should not sound as if that you've prepared for the interview and you have just marked up the answer and you're basically explaining to the interviewer. It should be very much looking like you have worked on the framework and it's practically, you know, how it works. And there is also a chance that they may go in depth in each and every topic which you are going to explain here. So when I say, for example, OOPS concepts, what do you understand by the OOPS concepts in Java, right? So as we know that we have one more OOPS concepts, which is a very simple, simple thing, right? Class and objects. Right? These all OOPS concepts we use day to day, but when we are being asked in the interview, we should be also be able to explain it with practically whatever our framework is, how it was used, and they should be also be able to uh, feel as if what you're saying is actually justified. Means it is indeed being used in your framework. It should not look as if you have just mugged up and you have told to the interviewer, right? So what do I mean by that? So you have to basically explain your framework, which you may have been asked in the previous question. Now, in this particular question, you have to talk about the framework, okay? And you need not write a code. You just have to explain to them where are the areas where you have used these different things, right? Now, when I say interfaces, you know that WebDriver is an interface in your automation, right? So this is a perfect example for you to explain to them that WebDriver was an interface and implementing this interface, there are different classes like you have Chrome WebDriver, you have Firefox WebDriver, you have IE WebDriver, et cetera. So you have to tell them that these are the different classes which are implementing this interface of driver, right? Now, encapsulation. What is encapsulation? First of all, you have to make them understand what is encapsulation theoretically from a Java perspective, then tell how you applied it in your automation framework. So encapsulation is like basically tightly coupling your data, right? And basically your variables and everything has to be tightly coupled into like a capsule. So not the external world should not be able to modify your private variables, right? What are private variables you are having within your Java files? Those should be having a getter and a setter, right? This is what we implement the encapsulation. So that you need to explain of your project, how you have done it, right? What is polymorphism? Polymorphism is basically taking many forms, right? And that can have method overloading as well as method overriding. I'll come to this method overriding part in a minute. Method overloading is what? Basically, you are having one method. Uh, name. Name is same. Okay. Name is same. But it can. Just explaining a bit here. It's not a detailed session, but I'm just explaining for those who are have not gone through my previous sessions in Java for them to understand what is method overloading, right? One method whose name is same, okay? But it can have different parameters, data types, sometimes number, or even sequence can also change. Number of arguments, right, can change. Even the sequence of arguments can also change. So this, are, this is for the ones who may not understand exactly what is method overloading. I've just given a high level idea. Now we do method overloading in constructors. So what is constructors? Again, if you're new, you can go through my Java playlist to understand. So constructor overloading, we do many a times in our automation framework. So you can explain about that as an example of method overloading. It's a simple thing, right? So for example, if you are having a Java file, which is for 
I'm just giving a random example. Let's say simple framework. Okay. You can have this as a non-parameterized constructor. You can have another constructor which is taking two arguments, maybe to initialize. Let's say, for example, I'm talking about int name, int description, for example, right? So this is like an example of a constructor overloading for your file, which is having simple framework as a name of the file. So this is how you're going to do it. What is method overriding, right? The next part, which I've mentioned in the same question. Method overriding is basically like overriding definition of your parent class method in your subclass. Basically, it's a part of the inheritance. So when you are having inheritance between your parent and the child class, okay? So I'll call parent class as a super class, okay? As a super class. And I'll call the subclass as a subclass or a child class, for example. Right? So if you are having a method in your parent class, for example, let's consider there is a method called uh, get details, for example. This is how we need to write a method name. It should start with a small let letter. It's like a camel case. And then it should end with the capital letter for the next word, right? First word should be starting with a small. Second word should be starting with a capital. You can also make use of underscore. It's up to the programmer how they want to do it. Now in the child class, we will have the get details as it is, but the definition is going to change. So this was a get details method of your parent class. So I'll just say system.out.println. This for the namesake, I'm just giving a ex simple example here. Then this is for your parent class. Okay, this is how in your parent class, let's say your method looks like. But how does your method look like in your child class? It will be overridden, meaning the description or the body is going to change, but not the method signature. Method signature means the name of your method the parameters of a method is going to remain the same. What will change is a method body. You can have more lines of code. You can change the line of code. You can say child class, etc., like that, right? And you can keep on adding whatever new lines of code if you want. So this is what we call as method overriding. And there is going to be a small up arrow shown here, indicating that you have done the method overriding. Okay, that is how you have to explain for your framework how you have done the method overriding. You need to explain that part to the interviewer. That's what is the polymorphism of method overloading and the method overriding. What is abstraction here? Right? Abstraction definition is that hiding internal implementation details to the external world. Right? External world. This you have already done via using interfaces. You need to tell them that you have already done this using interfaces because in interfaces you are just giving a template and there are classes which are basically uh, implementing those particular interfaces right so how we have implemented that is hidden to the user no one knows outside world doesn't know how you have done the implementation right and how can you explain them about inheritance well this is very basic thing that in your framework there will be always something called base class which is like your parent most class parent class in your framework okay and inheriting your base class would be the other subclasses which are required so for example you would be having the different classes which will be required for your framework so i'll just take an example that you need to log in you need to have a login.java basically which will have the page object model for your login functionality right so this is going to implement so this is going to extend base class. I'm just going to have like this login extends base class. Likewise, you can have login test, which is going to test your login functionality, right? Under your test scripts file, that is also going to extend your base class. So why are we doing all these things? Because we want to maintain the driver synchronization as well as the continuity of the session of the driver, right? So all your uh, different functionalities, for example, that is launching browser, that is the driver initialization part, right? And then properties initialization part, etc. Whichever things are prerequisites, all would be defined here in your base class. So this thing we need to make sure is that we are doing a proper 
Okay. Yes. So this all things we are going to, going to do in the base class. So that is how we are going to have the inheritance applied within our automation framework. So you can have a base class, you can have different classes which are extending the base class and that's how inheritance is going to be established. And this polymorphism also will come into play where I had explained that method overriding is also going to be used because we are doing inheritance here, right? So we have used inheritance, we have used abstraction, we have used polymorphism. Then we have talked about the different things within polymorphism that is method overriding, overriding. then we can have uh, encapsulation also we discussed, we discussed about interfaces. And we also discussed about the class and objects, of course, which are going to be used. And within this concept, we also discussed about constructors in Java. So these are the ones which are the important OOPS concepts, which they will expect you to explain to them how you have used it as a part of your automation framework. So I hope this is clear. And in the next video, we are going to discuss in detail about the different coding interview questions, which you can expect in an interview. So stay tuned for that. And I'll give a demo of how to basically prepare as well from lead code geeks for geeks and other websites so stay tuned for my next video guys thank you so much